Okay, I want to show you how to maintain a uh, flooded lead acid battery bank. Uh, this particular battery bank uh, we installed, it's a uh, 8 crown 6 volts uh, battery bank uh, put together in 48 volt. Uh, as you note, that it's got the automatic watering kit uh, and it is connected to the uh, Magnum. Uh, which we'll go over later. As far as maintaining the batteries, uh, I just showed up here on this customer and the first thing that I looked at was the level indicators of the caps. Uh, they all seem to be within some good operating range. They have, um, usually that would be a way down there if it was a dry cell, uh, but pretty much that's uh, the levels that, um, that I found them at. I'll definitely be wanting to top them off. Uh, once I go through a specific gravity uh, measurement and then uh, perhaps see if it needs to be equalized or not. If the specific gravities of different cells are in different measurements, then it's an indication that an equalization uh, would be uh, needed or desired. So this is the uh, crown. It's a total of 395 amp hours and uh, we'll go through the specific gravity test. Now, in taking the Pacific Gravity Test, what we'll do is use a uh, gravity meter, a uh, plunger here. I'm actually sticking it down into the battery cell itself. Then I'll be taking up some water up to the point where I can read the bottom of the meniscus of the, uh, the liquid. So, I've brought up a little bit too much, but I'll put some more acid back down into the cell. And as the plunger settles, it shows me... Uh, approximately 1.28, 1.29 on its specific gravity test. So what I'll do is go through each individual cell one by one and see uh, how closely each cell matches to the specific gravity. Uh, at this point, I would uh, want to turn the charger and charging off and take some load off so the batteries are just sitting there without being disturbed and we can get a good measurement for that. Okay, having taken the specific gravity of each individual cell, pretty much found that they were close to 1.29, all of them, and uh, that means this battery is pretty well equalized. If there was a different measurement on the individual cells, it would make a clear indication that one cell wasn't pulling its weight and the uh, battery bank uh, should be equalized. I'll probably go ahead and just uh, run it through a short equalization schedule just to bubble it a little bit. Uh, won't hurt it, but I uh, don't need to go through a full equalization on this. So just went through the specific gravities and um, that's how to maintain it. Okay, to water the battery bank, I'm just going to quick connect uh, onto this uh, universal section here, which is connected to a distilled water reservoir right above the battery enclosure. So when I connect that to it, which give me uh, hard to do with one hand, but uh, Okay, I couldn't do it with one hand, but now as I connected it, you can see that the uh, Ferris wheel is spinning. So that means that the batteries are taking on water. And when that Ferris wheel stops, it will indicate that all the uh, cells are full. Um, these cells were down a little bit, so it would probably take on um, a little bit of water. Probably have to add to the reservoir or some, but all the specific gravities of each individual cell uh, were very close to equal. So um, at this point, I'm just watering it and uh, we'll put it through a, um, a cycle here in a second. Okay, it's an important thing to note to absolutely use distilled water and not any mineral water or anything with tap water or any of that nature. Distilled water is important. It's, uh, it'll keep, uh, keep your batteries alive. Okay, our Ferris wheel has stopped spinning and all the particular cells are all full. As you notice, the white dots are all the way up to the reservoir. And so I know that each individual cell has a full amount of distilled water. Okay, I went ahead and started a quick equalization with the, uh, actually powered it through the solar. As you can hear, if you can hear closely, the cells are gurgling. makes a little hissing noise uh, throughout. There's um, an overcharge going into each cell and it allows to uh, bubble the plates and get some of the particulate off. And what an overcharge does, it basically distills out all the particulates back into the solution and uh, equalizes each individual cell. So with a battery bank, you wanna go through an equalization so the batteries are all working together.
Okay, one final step is just to make sure that there's no acid sitting on the batteries or anywhere near the terminal. So I'm just going by and wiping it off with a little bit of wet distilled water on a rag. So I'm just making sure that the tops of the batteries are clean. Now one reason that we vent battery boxes is that I can actually smell a little bit of hydrogen coming out uh, of the batteries themselves. So as this box was closed, or if it was closed, it would need to be a, a vented condition. Definitely would not want to enclose up a bunch of hydrogen around electricity. Not to be scary, but uh, battery boxes need to be vented and uh, on most of our systems we'll put in actually a, a vented fan that will be uh, vented to the outside and run during a certain voltage. Okay, to start up equalization with the midnight, I'm just going to go to the main menu and the charge and go down to EQ. And then I'm going to push up and then it says EQ started. So when I go back to the main menu or the status, it'll show equalize here and actually a battery voltage going into the bank of 61.8 volts, which is what the setting is. It's equalizing off the solar, so it's bringing in some uh, solar for that. And I can hear the batteries uh, making their hiss. Okay, to take it out of equalize, I just go in reverse and then I push down and it'll go to EQ stopped, go to the status and it'll be back into float mode, which is right at 55.7 volts. Okay, to equalize from the, mid, uh, from the Magnum, I'm just going to hold the charger button down and uh, it'll go to an equalization. Um, it will increase its voltage here shortly and basically go through similar to what the Midnight did and increase it up to an equalization uh, level of voltage. It's on its increase now, but it actually is going through the magnum instead of the solar. Okay, just to turn it off, I'm going to hold it back down and it will uh, get back to uh, standby mode. And this should be flashing. Okay, the system is fully serviced. Uh, the batteries are in good shape. I left them full and they're in charge mode. Just doing a little test in state of charge connect just to see how the loads are running. It is pulling it through the solar. There's probably very, very little that's actually being pulled uh, through the batteries themselves, so it's in good shape. I'm going to change it back to the control of um, Auto Connect just so we can um, make sure that uh, this customer is going to be in standby. Okay, just going to put it back in Auto Connect, scrolling the dial, pushing the dial, and then the inverter should shut off, and then it'll be in an Auto Connect mode. Okay, what this magnum is feeding is up in the main panel. It's sending it to the house with a 30 amp breaker, which there's a main panel there. There's just five circuits on here for this barn that power from here directly from the solar. But the feed to the house goes through that 30 amp breaker up the hill. Here's the array that's powering inside where the magnum is and the battery bank is that I just serviced.